Cheese. Cheese and rice. Did, did you test fine? Testing, 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 yeah. testing, testing. Is it okay? It's fine. Is it okay? Testing. It's fine. Is it okay? It's not okay. See, it's oh. the lights are barely moving. Hello, hello, testies, testies, one, two, three. Ah. Okay. Okay, yours works fine. <laughs> me, 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 me. Right. Okay. Who wants to do intro? Brick does. Nope. He said to himself on the porch. He's a liar. P- pick a character and and do do the intro. No. I'm not your bitch. <laughs> You're not the boss of me. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, think, of, think about that for a second. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You, you don't own me. Also, think about that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't own me. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Hello, and welcome to the Lobbycast. It's episode 302. Today is December 6th. Do it. Go ahead. Do it. Yeah. Here we go. This episode is absolutely not brought to you by Coca-Cola. As delicious as it is. It is also not brought to you by Cock and Bull Ginger Beer. So there you go. It would be funnier if there was a penis on the can. (laughs) It would not be funnier. I I honestly have nothing for the name of that. That stands for itself. Yeah, it stands for itself. Um... Uh, ginger beer is non-alcoholic, so in order to make it fancy, you have to mix it with something else. Mm. And you are mixing tonight with? Um, tequila. Nice. Depending on where you go, this beverage, it's the uh, its the tequila variation of the Moscow Mule. Depending on where you go, it is either called a drug mule if it's a fancier place, if it's a less fancy place, they call it the Donkey Show. Nice. This is not a fancy place. So Hence. this is this uh, this beverage is the Donkey Show nice. or the Kinky Kelly. I have no idea what you're referring to. Kinky Kelly from Clerks Three, Two, Two, whatever. Two. Thank you. <laughs> three doesn't was, exist quite I was yet. Close. Well, you, you were, were so closer close. than Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You, you did incorporate the word. Clerks, clerks into your yeah. answer. <laughs> what is <laughs> what is Clerks three? Oh, two. Sorry. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh. stupid, stupid, stupid. <laughs> mm. uh, um. Yeah. So, fellas, <laughs> you got any news for us? News. Things you, uh, want, things you want to talk about? Things well, you want to... I mean, I guess we might as well just get it right out right out into the open Whoa. straight away. Whoa. Um, well, like following, a... following the cock and bull in the, in the donkey show here yeah. has absolutely nothing to do with any of that. Uh, <laughs> Destiny's new expansion drops on oh. Tuesday. Okay. Oh, that's true. Um, very excited for the new expansion. Um, I'm also curious how the fallout from their recent kind of press announcements about how things are going to change and what it's going to do to your exotics and this and this and that and that is going to affect uh, the... That stuff is uh, is already in play. It is. Yeah. Um, but they kind of mismanaged uh, from some of the things that I've seen, some of the things I've read, they've kind of mismanaged their information output. And it sounds like some bad information was put out about, uh, especially the exotics that wound up either being recanted or not being true in the first place. Oh, sure. So, but Ooh. I'm excited for it. I'm looking forward to to still not getting a raid completed because it's so hard to find a raid. I haven't so. even started a raid. Yeah. I can say I've started one. I can say I put three hours into one, and oh, I can wow. say that I have not finished one. Yeah, I don't know if I have three hours that I can string together in order to go on a raid. Yeah, which is kind of the problem. Yeah. So, although uh, also related to Destiny, but not official Destiny, since Bungie's still not going to support matchmaking for any raids, there is a group or a website out there that has been getting some fairly high reviews and high praise for connecting players together. It's called Destiny LFG, or otherwise Destiny Looking, Looking for, for Group. Looking for Group, yeah. And um, I was actually talking to uh, another friend of mine today, and... He uh, was very successful using that website. He actually ran through the Quincy rate. Taggart. Uh, no, not Quincy Taggart. Um, a uh, a relatively new addition to my friends list. 
uh, courtesy of Uncle Sam. Excellent. Uncle Sam bringing us together for good gaming times. But uh, he actually ran through the raid five times this past week uh, via the Looking for Group uh, website. Really? Three times on normal, twice on hard. And maxed out all three of his characters. So Wow. He had a really successful week. <laughs> yeah, I should say so. What next? Uh, Just next, the, uh, the expansion. The expansion raid. Yep. Okay. So that's what I got from the Destiny storefront. Excellent. I'm sure we'll talk about uh, Destiny some more. What? Keep no, going. we'll wait. <laughs> Just keep going. We'll wait. Hey, Paul Bunyan, you having, a, having trouble there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you not watching at home... <laughs> This brief interlude has been brought to you by a brick trying to shrug out of a coat. <laughs> <laughs> it's so much harder when you're sitting down. You you were eventually successful, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, you know, since you're wearing a cowboy's hat, brick, we can uh, we can say that in some news that that. Cowboys had a much better week of football this week. This week they were playing the Bears. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> like yes, yeah, the offense looked great and everything, but oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> They've lost to worse teams this year. Who? I don't know. Um, had to do against the, the Giants. Fall. That was a close game, wasn't it? Okay, they did lose to the Redskins, but still, the Bears are terrible. <laughs> they're terrible. <laughs> like, they're not as bad as the Raiders. And, and see, here's the here's the worst part, though, is that yeah, the Cowboys scored forty one points on them, but the Bears scored like thirty one, didn't they? Was it like forty one thirty one or something like that at the end of it? Um, no, I, th- I think it was. I think there was a bigger gap than ten points there. I, I disagree. All right. But, but nonetheless, the point is... They won. They won, and they're 9-4 and four now. But they have to play the Eagles uh, next week, and that's... They, they basically have to win their next three. Yeah. They have to win the rest of the games of the regular season. Yeah. I mean, at least, at the very least, two out of the three. But their record cannot be worse than last year's. No, because, because they've already gotten nine wins. They've gotten nine wins. So that's true. The worst that they can do is nine and seven. Right. <laughs> but, but it's I, not eight and eight, Brick. It's not eight and eight. So it's an improvement. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> I'm telling you there's a chance. That, that hey, would technically be a winning season. So. My, my, my prediction on Super, Soul, Super Bowl Sunday of last year was that the Cowboys would win their division. And it's not completely out of... Out it's, of not, uh, it's not completely ridiculous, but if they lose to the Eagles, it's completely ridiculous. <laughs> it's mostly ridiculous at that point. Because then they have lost yeah. two division games to the Eagles, and the right. Eagles are going to take it, because right. they have technically the same record. They're 9-3 right. and three right now. <clears throat> Yes, this is all correct. So they need to beat the Eagles. If they don't beat the Eagles, it's over. They, they could still get in a wild card, but I, as part of my pres- prediction, I specifically said it would not be a wild card spot in the playoffs. It would be an actual spot in the playoffs. So, But yeah, making the playoffs is making the playoffs. And there's a bunch of stuff that happens. You know, like Romo is technically hurt, kind of, you know. Yeah, back and everything. So there's a lot of stuff that happens. So there's a, still a valid prediction if they make the playoffs. But did you say specifically I that said they would win their division? That that it would not be a wild card spot. It would be division an actual, winning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. An well, spot. then, yeah, you would be. Wrong. Yeah, I would be wrong. <laughs> Sometimes when you win, you lose. I don't. I don't have any bit of confidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll I see. I mean, but they were playing the Eagles at home. Um, last time. Last time, and they're yeah. terrible at home this year for some reason. Yeah. And they're awesome on the road. They're like, what, 5-0 and on the road now? I think so. Yeah. So, we'll, any, we'll see. Anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Uh, in other news, and this is you know gets into what I've been watching also. Um, the first annual Game Awards, uh, put on by Jeff Keighley and a bunch of other industry types, uh, was and hosted by Jeff Keighley, uh, went on yesterday. Yes, it was yesterday. Do you, uh, either of you gentlemen have a chance to watch any of that? No. I, in fact, had no idea that this thing existed in the first place. Yep. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a new... Uh, uh, I, I don't know a, a a I don't know what makes it different than the VGAs, but it's different than the VGAs. It's a new award show specifically for gaming. Oh, okay. Well, so there's that. What what channel was it on? Uh, I watched it through my Xbox. Okay. And I think probably on the internet. It was. Yeah, it was uh, broadcast through Steam and Xbox Video, both for 360 and for one one. Okay. I do not know if it was available on the PlayStation 4. I'm assuming yes. Probably. Probably, but yes. We'll see. So um, it's really interesting, and there were some surprises. Um, there weren't. The, it wasn't a surprise for Game of the Year. The nominees were uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, Dark Souls 2, uh, Hearthstone's Heroes of Warcraft, or something along those lines. Yeah. Uh, Bayonetta 2. Really? Who would have thought that would have been a contender? Well, that that's a surprise. Yeah, that is a surprise. And then uh, Middle Earth, Shadows of Mordor. I just picked that up. I haven't played it yet, but I just, yeah. I just got it. Because it was $25 on, on uh, Amazon over so, the Black Friday I mean, weekend. With, without looking at the answer, who won Game of the Year out of those five? I'm going to go with Dragon Age Inquisition. Yeah, I'm going to go with Inquisition, yeah. too. Yeah, of course. Of course. Although I would say that Shadow of Mordor was probably a close second. Okay. Were there, would there have been any other games that you would have would have nominated? No. I would have nominated Destiny for no other reason that I can't stop playing it. This is true. It is addictive like crack, but I think <laughs> the thing that hampered Destiny, and it pains me to say this because I really, 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 really enjoy the game, but I think the lack of story and story development probably kept it out of the running for Game of the Year. Yeah. I would agree with that. That's what uh, kept you me know, out of playing it, really. Because <laughs> I have to have a really good story. Well, yes, and, but obviously you have well, played this with is, us. And right. we make our own story, or at least we are, are definitely our own you, characters. You make your own narrative. So, yeah. Well, it's a running commentary. <laughs> have you ever played with Jordan? Um, yeah, it's been a while. It, you don't need story when you have Jordan. It's he is yeah. he's a nonstop character of himself. It's it's awesome. In in Destiny, they really they yeah. really <laughs> um, they really leave it to you to like gather the story and and get all the references because they're all in those grimoire pages. Yes, you just have to. It's it's more studying than. And anything. No, I'm playing well, a video game. <laughs> but you know, it's kind of like reading. It's it's like reading the books in the Elder Scrolls games. That's where you get the the depth yeah. of story. Well, yeah, but the Elder Scrolls is a lot different than than like I don't know. If you were just to play the story and not get distracted in Destiny, it is a cohesive story. <sighs> just play straight through the story missions. But it's not. It's not. It's not super in depth though. Like, I mean, because it, see, the thing is, is about Elder Scrolls, you can play through that without reading any of the books or anything like that, and it's still true. a really in depth and great story just on its own without doing anything extra. I could not tell you the story to any of the Elder Scrolls game, other than uh, at the end of the last one, you had to fight a dragon. Well, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> that, but you know, but. Also, like for instance, my my favorite games that I play through them almost a hundred percent every single time. It's two series. It's the the Batman Arkham series, and which I couldn't get into, and Grand Theft Auto, which I couldn't get into um, on the three hundred and sixty. But I'm really tempted at some point to get it for the one. It, here's the thing about the one. <clears throat> here's the thing about um, the games for the Xbox One. There are a lot of them I really want to get, and in theory, I want to play, but I still have three unopened games upstairs. I just opened Shadows of Mordor. 
Yeah. And I've barely been playing Inquisition. Like I've been playing it, but not not a ton, not as much as I thought. I I cannot start Dragon Age and Quintessence. The more I hear about it, the more I know I can't start the game because I just... don't have time to play a game that has a hundred and thirty hours. I've got twenty five into line. it, and I've barely touched main storyline. Yeah, which is awesome for me because I can pump hours into it when well, I have hours to give. And but. see, I love games like that though mm. because you, it's like Skyrim. You never there's you're never done with it. Never I, ending story. <laughs> Hmm. I love games that you're never done with because uh, you really get your 60 bucks out of them. Yes. If you're never finished true. with them. Yes. You know, you can always pick them up and just keep going. Mm -hmm. And it's never done. Granted, the two games that I, the two franchises I love the most, which are the Arkham series and Grand Theft Auto, those have a pretty stark ending point. Sure. But I love the stories on both of those games, both of those franchises. Right. I've never been disappointed with a story, even though the, the earlier Grand Theft Autos were not nearly you, as in-depth as they are now. But Did you pick up the Grand Theft Auto for PS4 or Xbox One? I'm going to pick it up for Xbox One, because I, I had it on PS3, and so I think I'm just going to do a direct download on Xbox One. Can you transfer characters from PS3 to Xbox One? Um, like the in the online version of it? I don't think so. Because I know you can 360 to Xbox One. Probably. And presumably PS3 to But PS4. I didn't really play the online that much. I mean, me and my brother kind of played it, but and we still kind of do, but the only thing that we do is we just go around and rob liquor stores and get the wanted level up to like six stars and try and run from the cops. Fair enough. <laughs> like we Fair did, enough. It wasn't super in-depth in the in the uh, online, but the, the main story of it is so good and it's so well done that I really want to play through it again. In fact, I might I might actually just buy that tonight <laughs> for, for Xbox One and start the fair story enough. over. Fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Um So it was it was kind of it was a decent award show. Like I said, it was their first one. Uh the sound uh kept going in and out like the people would be talking on stage and the mic hadn't been lit up yet. Yeah. Um there were lots of uh technical type issues, but you know if they can build this into something um, that's a little bit better than the VGAs, then you know, good on them for that. So that was uh, that was kind of cool. They had Imagine Dragons play a couple of songs. Nice. So um, it's not bad. And let's see here, a bunch of uh, world premiere trailers, things along those lines. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to think. Oh. Uh, the 20th anniversary of PlayStation. Wow. Of the PlayStation brand. Um, Stranger Yet, 10th anniversary of Halo. Yes. Or Halo 2. Halo you know, 2. Halo 2. One of those has grown faster. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but, I mean, we were all, like, not you. Yeah, you came in uh, you, you uh, just before Halo Three. Yeah, um, but Halo o Two, OG all Halo, the, well, all the gaming at the at oh, the yeah. old store. Oh yeah, um, I can't parties. believe that's been ten years ago. I can. That's crazy. Oh my! God. Yeah, because it was right after I got out of basic. That's nuts to me. Jesus. Yeah, let that one start. Cheese and rice. <laughs> Cheese and rice. <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, there was a, there's an industry icon award given to Ken and Roberta Williams, the people who started up uh, Sierra. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Nice. Um, she, was, she, was... She, she was saying, I can't believe it's been 17 years since I've been in the industry. I'm like, oh uh, my goodness. Well, speaking of Sierra games, that actually opens up. They're a, doing a new uh, King's Quest. That's what I was about to say. Is yeah. I, I remember specifically, I got King's Quest Five as a a gift one year. Is and that the so you want to be a hero game? No, that's that was City of Heroes. That yeah, that no, was no, something no. different. No, here that was no, or was that King's Quest? That may have been King's Quest. It may have been like one of the early yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I used to have a King's Quest game on a stack of five and a quarter floppy yes. disks. Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what King's Quest V was for me. And I remember specifically, uh, my father had to take me to a computer superstore, which at the time was probably nothing like what we think of today. <clears throat> and uh, we had to buy a very specific upgrade. We had to upgrade our computer to a VGA-capable monitor. <laughs> In order to play King's Quest V. Wow. VGA. Kids. Wow. Yeah, we're like, you know, we're just moving away from cathode ray tubes at that point. VGA is 320 by 480? Yeah. yeah I believe so, yeah. Well, 480, oh no, it'd be 480 by 320, because back then the, there were... Yes. S- four, square. Four by three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, because our, well, our that, I mean, yeah, because our you think EGA card couldn't support it, right? Yeah, that's. Uh, and now that, that I've just dated myself, <coughs> right? That's back when the number of colors your monitor could display um, was not large, <laughs> right? <laughs> it was yay sixteen. We've hit a whole new threshold. <laughs> um, <laughs> 16? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. It was high tech, brother. I, I see my my uh, my household was was pretty uh tech savvy. I was actually using the internet in 1990. I believe you because I was too. Yeah. Yeah, it was after I graduated high school, so I was 17 years old. Um, Maybe right after my 18th birthday, but we definitely had Prodigy Internet and uh, bulletin boards. Um, You could go to American Airlines and... uh, And check your flights. Check your flights and stuff like that. Yeah. Brick, back in the day, they used to actually mail you these discs, and they would say either AOL or Prodigy. Oh, no, I I remember that. Oh, okay. Oh, thank God. Uh, no, but, <laughs> but I, was, we, uh, I was just about to say you were using the internet. We had yes, modems. The the internet singular. The, the we had uh, we had modems in the house. Sixteen baud. Uh, Remember your baud ratings? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, we had modems in the house three years prior to that. For uh, my dad, like transferring information from the house and stuff like that, and. Uh, to work yeah. at his work, huge room full of mainframes that used punch cards, brick. Pun- punch cards, brick. Uh-huh. They stored information on pieces of cardboard. Oh no! Yeah, I know, I know, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm. I. I know everything that you're talking about because <laughs> it's in the history books. It. Yeah, because it's in the history books. It For is those in the of you books. not watching along at home. Uh, Brick just presented his driver's license, and while I won't give out his actual date of birth, um, he may be culturally aware of everything we're discussing, but he was merely cracking open his eyes at about that time period. Welcome to the world, Brick. Yeah, uh, you were born about a month before I graduated high school. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) And you're not 15. <laughs> um, so I, there, there were a couple of cool things. Uh, a very interesting thing. Uh, best performance in a video game. You know, voice actors. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trey Parker beat out Kevin Spacey. Really? And wait, 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 Trey Parker or Troy Baker? Trey, Trey Parker, Parker for, for South, South Park, Park Sword of, of Truth. Truth. Because, or Stick of Truth. Stick of Truth. Um, because he did all the voices in the in the game, uh, so it actually showed a like a wider range. Um, but you know, just just as I was thinking about how this is the only place that Trey Parker would beat Kevin Smith and uh, or Kevin Spacey in acting, maybe not Kevin Smith, but Kevin Spacey in acting, uh, he made that same joke. On on stage, Trey Parker did when he was uh, accepting the award. It's like I love video games because this is the only way that Trey Parker could ever beat Kevin Spacey in acting. Nice. <laughs> so, um, but you know, I mean, it's a typical award show. It wasn't, okay. you know, 
It would have been better had they not had so many technical issues. Sure. Uh, other than that, um, there was a brief, uh, although I didn't see it, there was an interruption in Xbox Live accessibility and a, uh, a hacker group called Lizard Squad took yep. responsibility for taking Xbox Live offline. They took down Xbox Live. A they, denial of service thing, and they said they're going to do it again around Christmas. Yeah, they took down Xbox Live. They took down PlayStation Network. Uh, they took down, I believe, the Destiny servers and the Call of Duty Advanced Warfighter uh, servers as well. So they had a pretty massive uh, hacking spree recently. Yeah. Um, I believe this the same squad that was also related to a fairly significant breach of data at Sony Pictures. Recently. Oh, right, where they uh, they started releasing a bunch of um, celebrity c- celebrities' social security numbers. Yep, and also uh, one of the interesting things that came out of that, at least in my opinion, was that they released salary figures for Sony Pictures employees. Wow. And showed kind of a stark disparity between uh, men's salary and women's salary in the same positions. So the article that I read speculated that we may see a host of uh, litigation against Sony Pictures for inequality in pay as uh-huh. a result of criminal activity. Well, you know, if 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 um, I mean, if there's got if there's going to be a silver lining, I think that would... <laughs> you know, yeah, you got to look to the bright side of things. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, and we're 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 all uh, non caveman types, so. That is kind of BS that women Speak get for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> women get paid less for the same job as yes. as somebody else. It's it's nonsense. I agree. So not not it's, to turn our show into a political venue, no no no. But <clears throat> you know, one of the interesting things that came about. Yeah. Well, I hadn't heard that part, but but uh, good, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if something good comes of it, then sure. then I think that's awesome. Sure. But as for them taking uh, just the like, gaming servers offline, I no, don't see the that point makes of that. them dicks. I don't see the point of it. Yes, like what? What do you get out of ruining a, somebody else's fun? Yeah, I mean, especially when you have limited time to get online, like some of us. In yeah, our, in our day to day lives, may have only a specific hour or two to devote to something. That hobby may be video games, and to log on to Xbox One after settling into the couch and go. What the nope. F? No? Oh, I guess I'll go outside. <laughs> and really, outside's not any better. So. Uh, no. No, especially <laughs> when those hours are at night. Yeah, right? It's like, it's just outside. And in Denver, it's kind of cold. It's a bit chilly. Yeah. All right, well, um, if you fellas don't have any news, let's go ahead and move on to the weekly watches. Willem, what you listening to, sir? Ah, uh, well... I've been doing a lot of report writing recently in my civilian job, and I've been listening to Pandora, and I've got a fairly good uh, Pandora radio station built at the moment. It started off being Black Keys Radio, which nothing wrong with the Black Keys in the first place. Uh, but slowly and surely, it kind of adds in. Um, their base stations before you like and dislike a, a ton of songs, mm. they're pretty crappy. Yeah. I don't know what happened with their whole uh, genome, music genome thing or whatever. Yeah. It, it's it's never been as good as, as Spotify or Xbox uh, Xbox Music's just regular thing. Okay. I have no basis of comparison, unfortunately. I've been stuck. I saddled my horse to the Pandora pony. No, wait. That's not. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> that wasn't a horse, I'm not, and that's not a pony. And that's not a pony. <laughs> And we're back. How is that Tijuana donkey show over there? Uh, it's it sounds good, quite good. Anyways, moving on. Um, but yeah, so slowly and surely, I've I've added and and, and subtracted from it, and now it's at a, a pretty decent space. But I've really become interested in a kind of electronica, kind of hip hop artist by the name of Wax Taylor. Uh, kind of like somebody who sews clothing, so Taylor, but yeah. Wax as in like LPs, right? Um, one X or two? One. All right. One. Uh, really interesting. He's got a good groove to him. Um, I'm actually thinking about seeing if I can pick up some of his albums. I recommend him. He's good, mellow, uh, easy to listen to. He's got a, got a good he, beat. He, he drops a good beat. It. Yeah, he drops <laughs> a good beat. 
Um, so on top of that, uh, been picking out, like I said, the Wax Taylor tracks from my Pandora station. Uh, let's see, some Tool, of course, some Lord, actually, a uh, little Lana Del Rey still. Uh, and then uh, lately today, I've been on a Los Lobos kick. <laughs> really? Yeah, I got <laughs> I got nothing else for well, you. I it's... was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was way out of the blue. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of what I said as I was driving around listening to my iPod going, you know what? I don't know why, but Los Lobos it is. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm I'm still reeling. Yeah. As you should be. <laughs> it's good. It's very good. It's, it's, it's very good. Yes, it's very good. Brick, how about yourself? Um, I, uh, at work, I've just been listening to a lot of Shuffle All, um, because I tried to listen to podcasts, but... Um, it's really difficult to do my job and focus on it while listening right. intensely to a podcast. So I can't, I can't do that. Um, well, that'll be in stark contrast to, uh, to my, my work. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but anyway, so shuffle all there. Cause I can just have music on in the background, um, of whatever it is I'm doing, but on the way, uh, to and from work, I have been listening to Freakonomics radio. Um, and a new podcast, uh, from the people who bring us this American life. It is called Serial. Right. Right. I heard, uh, an ad for that today. And it's amazing. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Serial as in, uh, serial show. Not Lucky Charms. Yes. Right. S-E-R-I-A-L. Yeah. It's so good. And, and cause it's, uh, it's like episodes of This American Life, but it's um, told, you know, as a continuing storyline week by week, hence the name. Um, so it's uh, uh, the, the story that they're doing is this, um, this guy who was convicted of killing his girlfriend back in 1999. Yeah. But... Um, he may have been wrongfully accused and it's like a really thin case that they put together against him. And like, they just barely, like they got him convicted, but like it, you really are starting to think like maybe he shouldn't have ever been convicted. And, you know, but you know, just as soon as you're thinking, Oh, this guy never did it. Then you're like, Oh, maybe he did. And then you're like, no, 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 no. Oh, well, yeah, he probably did. <laughs> you know, <laughs> But it's really good, and they're on like nine episodes right now, and I don't know how many more they're doing. But I'm I'm on. I You're just, way on board. Oh yeah, I'm on seven. I'm on episode seven. Wow. Seven. Um, yeah, I I got a text message from Verizon this week that says, "Is that a Chicago Public Radio then?" Um, yeah, yeah, I think it is. Um, but I got a text message from some Verizon yesterday that said I have used seventy five percent of my data. Wow! <laughs> because, and it's because, and that is like skyrocketed higher than any other month. Yeah, because um, we I have like uh, I'm on a family plan and we have like five gigs of data. Okay, and I have used like three point nine. <laughs> and how many awesome. people are shared on your plan? Uh, two others, my my dad and his fiance, and so and they use like point two. And I've sure, been using like, you're like three point nine. You're like, you know, hey, you know what's I, awesome? I check the is emails. that they also got that text message? Oh no, I know. I <laughs> and he called me. He's like, uh, yeah, you might want to tone it back <laughs> <laughs> on the data. And I was like, seventy five percent. Let's see. Let's do some math here. Seventy five percent. And that's in two is, weeks. Uh, Saturday. Yeah, I was gonna say it's Saturday, December sixth. Yeah, you have a whole month to go. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, the cycle ends at the fifteenth. Oh, so. okay. Well, you got two weeks left. I oh, yeah. see. Mine, mine ended yesterday. So yeah, it is on the fifteenth. I, I, it's been two weeks, but the reason it has been is because I've been doing podcast uh, after podcast. I've been doing podcast. podcast after podcast after podcast, like and I, and it's been addict. most of the way. Uh, most of them have been on the way to work, mm-hmm. and so I'll either be downloading them or just mm-hmm. streaming them. 
mm-hmm. while I'm driving, and obviously there's no Wi-Fi there, so it's just eating up that data. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, well, maybe I should just download them at the house first, and then I'll, <laughs> and then I'll drive to work and listen to them that way. <laughs> make, make some plans for the future there, chap. But, yeah, because, like, especially with Freakonomics Radio, and there was a day at work I don't where, stream my podcast, so I don't have that. I don't have that problem. Well, and I normally don't either. I usually would if if I'm going to listen to them, I'll I'll make the enough of a conscious effort to have them subscribed to so that they just download while I'm at home or download them before I leave and go somewhere, but um you know, like most of it was while I was driving, but also there was a day last week at work where I was doing just a really repetitive task and so I could listen to podcasts. I listened to like probably five <sighs> episodes of Freakonomics Radio while I was just sitting there doing my work. And that's a lot. That's yeah. a lot of stuff. And and it was, you know, because I it was episodes that I hadn't anticipated listening to. Sure, so sure. I just kept clicking them. Like, like an episode would end. Like, oh, okay, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> more. <laughs> Put it in my veins. And so, because you know, I mean, like it made the day go by a hell of a lot faster sure, than yeah. if I wouldn't have had it. Um, Podcasts—they're a hell of a drug. Yeah, <laughs> but but yeah, apparently I've, you can't have too much of a good thing, <laughs> and I have reached that limit. Well, not quite. I've not, reached seventy-five percent of that. Uh, limit. Believe me, when you hit that limit, you'll know. Oh yeah, yeah. You'll know because <laughs> like I was, I was sitting there. I was like, ooh, seventy five, and I was like, they don't just cut you off either. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's not like they say, well, you've hit your five gigs. Congratulations, you're out. <laughs> they say, well, congratulations, you've hit your five gigs. Now you can start putting my kids through college. <laughs> yes, there is yeah. that. So until the fifteenth, I've got to be uber careful. Like I, I wanted to listen to a couple podcasts on the way over here and I was about to walk out the door and then I was like nope I need to wait and download it that's part of the reason why I was that's late that's why you were late it was because I had to wait and download them off of my Wi-Fi instead of downloading <laughs> them on the way as I would have normally done um, but yeah so it's it's been Freakonomics and Cereal and cool. Cereal's really good I, I where are you at on uh, Freakonomics? Um, I don't think I listened to this week's episode, actually. Uh, I was listening to a lot of backlogged episodes. Okay. Um, but I didn't listen to this week's episode because I was listening to so much cereal. Because it's yes. really, really good. Yes. And I'm very intrigued by it. So. Nice. Um, yeah, but that's it. Uh, well, I've been listening to Gamertag Radio. Um, it's a good podcast. They they have a lot of access, um, and some thing, <clears throat> you know, they put a lot of hard work into it. And they they're like not industry insiders, but they have access to a lot of people in the industry that uh, you know a lot of people don't. Nice, I'll say. Um, and listening to them talk about Assassin's Creed Unity, and listening to them talk about the uh, the Master Chief Collection has me really excited to someday open those boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Still um, haven't cracked into them, huh? No. No, and even Far Cry 4. Everything I've heard about those three games, other than the you know, the launch problems with Unity and, and Master Chief Collection, has me really excited for, I don't know, I guess a time when I, I you know really want to bust it out. But, but the thing is, is like... Um, it's kind of like the raids on on Destiny. What I'm most excited about for Unity and Master Chief Collection is a time that I can run through it with you guys. Okay, yeah, yeah. You know, and like run, do a legendary run through the Halo games. Sure. On uh, Master Chief Collection, or go through and and do the uh, the four player co op missions with you guys on. On Unity. Mm-hmm. Well, as soon as you and Jordan are ready to do that Master Chief Legendary. I'm Legendary. ready whenever, whenever. Well, I mean, I hey, guess we're just waiting I'm not Jordan. opposed to opening that plastic. I, I guess we're just waiting on Jordan then, because I haven't picked up the game, but as soon as you guys give me the go-ahead, I will go and pick it the shit up out of that game. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Do you have a Master Chief collection yet? A new. All right. Sometime probably in January is what it looks no, like. No, that now. that sounds reasonable. Get past Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. I got no spare funds. Right. 
No, I feel you on that. Oh, yeah. I feel you on that. Uh, uh, <laughs> there's this thing called Jordan's Wedding that uh, that we need to start yeah. spending money on. The thing is that I haven't even looked at the website yet. Oh, you yeah. should look at the website. I really should. I haven't yeah. even looked either because I can't afford it. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to stay another day. I've got like all these plans up here. Uh, I don't even have plans. In, I don't even have plans in my head. I've got, I, I'm sitting here in dread, going, oh, I, 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 I'm kind well, of want to strangle him right now. But that's a whole different story. But you can do it in in broken up into payments, mm-hmm. and it is six can months away. That? Can you do that for the flight too? No. Okay. Yeah. See, that's my main thing. Because well, that's your only thing. Because well, <laughs> well, no. But I'm I'm going to do an extra night too. Oh, so that's right. That, but. That's like um, two hundred bucks. Yeah, so that's not terrible, and yeah. I can I can definitely I I should probably just get on there and get that squared away. Yeah, but it's the flight that I have to <laughs> I have to think about because that's not going to be a cheap flight. <laughs> uh, it's probably a, a series of flights. Yeah, yeah. Which is we'll see. Be, I, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll let you know because I I'm because we I'm need started. to coordinate yeah. the flights anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. When you get started on that, let me know, and that will be my motivation okay. to get started on that. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good, Brick. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> um, I've also been listening to Freakonomics, and uh, there was kind of a, a cool little show on parking. Yes. Yeah, I listened to that one. That's uh, pretty good. It was a good. bit ago. It was a couple weeks ago, but yeah, I listened to that. Well, it, it was a, a rehash. Yeah. It was a rebroadcast anyway. But, um, well... If we're talking about strictly surface lots, yes. In the United States, yes. We have 3 parking spaces per car that exist in the United States. 3 parking spaces per, per car. Just surface lots. If you're talking about towers or below ground, uh, that number goes up to around 8 parking spaces per car in the United States. Do you know how I mean, I don't know how it is in other places, but in Denver, it's kind of hard to find parking from that's, time to time. And that's really what I'm sitting here thinking, going, but my God, I can never find a parking space. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's so, what everyone says. But So is it a, a more effect? But we have more parking spaces per capita than... Than, than virtually any other country. Yeah. We have more free parking than anywhere else. So that's sure. true. Sure. Also, I also that's, believe that. that's part of That the was reason. something they referenced is, is a, a book called The High Cost of Free Parking. Yeah, okay. well, and that's part of the reason why in high populated areas it's so hard to find parking is because there's so much free parking available. Okay, if there weren't free parking, that not as many people would uh, choose to drive across town to right. go there. People would shop a little bit more locally. Mm-hmm. Sure, use a little bit more public transportation, right? Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in mm. some cities. They're uh, they're working on uh, fluctuating parking rates. Like so during, high during demand time would be more more expensive. May cost you twice as much or three sure. times as much. So. Having having been a former student of the Metropolitan State College of Denver or now Metropolitan State University of Denver, whichever it's called, yeah, and watching all of the business people park down at Auraria because it was cheaper. And then walk over to the light rail to take the light rail into the rest of downtown, which is like a two-minute train ride. <laughs> um, thereby, that. thereby eliminating any student parking ever, ever possible. Mm-hmm. I would be a fan of uh, just really not letting people do that. So whatever that takes, I'm for it. I don't go downtown hardly at all, anyways. So I'm good. Yeah, well, as if um, you would have to have a a uh, student ID. The something or other yeah. on the dashboard of your car. Yeah. I'm all for like it. That. That's yeah. all you would have to do. But they don't require that right now. No, because right. <laughs> they're jerks. How about that? Yeah. How about that? I'm going to be thinking about parking spaces now for the rest of the night. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank You're you welcome. <clears throat> You're welcome. You're welcome. You enjoy that. <laughs> uh, then I also listened to an episode of This American Life. And then, uh, so I, th- I think this new show be right up my alley. The serial show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. And then I listened to an episode of Common Sense with Dan Carlin. So. Cool. Good. Good. All right, moving on. Will, whatcha watching? This week, I can honestly say 
I watched. No, go ahead and dishonestly say. I, I can dishonestly say that I watched 16 movies and 24 TV shows. <laughs> wow. That's a lot. Yeah. You find the Did you really do yeah. that? Not at all. Okay. <laughs> uh, this week, in fact, I have been so busy. I don't think I have sat down to watch anything significant. I think I maybe caught one or two episodes of The Penguins of Madagascar with my wife. I'll let that soak in for just a moment. Oh, please uh, don't. <laughs> uh, she's a huge Penguins fan. Uh, I, I, huge. I'm not surprised. Huge Penguins the, of Madagascar fan. The hockey team, right? No. <laughs> no. Aaron, this is why we're friends. The, the <laughs> Penguins of Madagascar, the kids' cartoon show. Oh, Penguins it's a, of Madagascar, because kids' oh, animated cartoon yeah. show. You remember the Madagascar movies? Oh, with yeah, the I was disappointed the in there in there being a like watching live action penguin stuff. No, 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 no. no, no. no. This is a cartoon. This is a cartoon. I'm not aware of it. No, it's it's are, actually really funny. Are you aware of the Madagascar movies? Only aware. I haven't seen any of them. Okay. The Penguins are a offshoot of those movies. Yeah. But okay. they have their own movie coming out this fall. Not mm-hmm. that I'm shamelessly plugging it at all. But wow. the yeah. Penguins are the best part of those movies. They are. I agree with you 100%. This episode absolutely not brought to you by the Penguins of Madagascar. <laughs> by DreamWorks Pictures. No, don't forget the DreamWorks Pictures. Oh, right. right. Um, we'll get so, sued. Yeah, I, I'm not... I'm not ashamed to say that I watched Penguins. It was kind of on in the background while she was working on her craft stuff, and I, I was working. I on wouldn't be homework. ashamed. I'm very, I'm very proud of Aaron for watching that. Actually, she's a huge fan. Brick, Brick is a pro penguin. He is, pro he is pro penguin, penguin all the yeah. way. Um, uh, but I, yeah, I really don't think I managed to sit down and watch anything significant this week. All right, Brick, Brick. Um, tell us what's what. All right, I'm gonna go in like a little bit of a jump around motion on my list here. Not that either of you can see it. Um, yeah, I wouldn't know the difference. So. Um, First, I watched uh, Hello, Ladies, the movie. Oh. Is, it, it's essentially Serenity for Hello, Ladies. <laughs> it's just, it's a long episode of Hello, Ladies that wraps everything up. So it's a, it's a slightly longer, slightly less disappointing uh, version of the show. Well, you know what, <laughs> I, I can't even say I'm dimly aware of the show itself. So Okay, but you're aware of Firefly and Serenity. I am aware, very, you, very much aware and, of Firefly. And and how much do you want to hit him now? Because I, I, I hold him down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> we'll take care of that after the show. Um, All right, but, do your worst, brown coat. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh. but anyway, oh. Um, Hello, Ladies, the movie was really good. It was really good. It was really, okay. really funny. It was, you know, just like the show. The TV show had its moments. It was um, not really, really funny. But there was uh, there was a cameo by uh, Nicole Kidman that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It was really, really good. Well, that that's a a phrase that you'll probably never hear again in your entire life, listeners. And it wasn't it wasn't her so cameo by Nicole Kidman. It's one of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life. It wasn't that. <laughs> that is. It wasn't necessarily her either. It was how how they used her because the whole plot of the movie is that uh, Stuart, the main character, his his ex girlfriend is is coming over uh, to Los Angeles from London with her husband, and he wants to like you know make them think that he's you know had all this success and. He you wants know, to impress her. Exactly. And so like they go to this party and Nicole Kidman's at the party and he just like offhand says, Oh yeah, yeah, I, I used to date her or something like that. And so he is he then ha- they're like, Oh, do you think we could say hi? And he's like, No, no, I don't want to bother her. He's like, Well, she's a friend, right? So what what would be the problem with asking a friend just to say hi? And so he has to go over to her and he's like Hey Nicole, and then he like starts to hug her, and he's like, "Don't worry, you're not in danger." <laughs> <laughs> and he has to like explain this whole thing to her, and she's really good about it and everything. But it was so funny how they used her in that movie because it was just like it was the most awkward thing ever. But that's what you know, Hello Ladies yeah. is in the spirit of The Office and everything like that. Um, last night I went to a Scrooged quote along. The classic movie with Bill Murray. I haven't seen that one. 
You've never seen Scrooge? I've never what? seen Scrooge. Oh, it's great. It is know? a good film. Because it's, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's um, Scrooge. You know, it's yeah. instead. The, the classic Charles Dickens tale. Right, right. But in, instead of, you know, some old guy playing it it's uh, in the 1800s, it's Bill Murray playing it in relatively modern Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with it as a cultural reference. Okay. But uh, other than that, yeah, I, I don't know much about it. It's good. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies because it's, you know, like that and Die Hard and Home Alone are probably my favorite Christmas movies. <laughs> Jordan and I are... are uh, are diehard guys for Christmas movies. Yeah. Oh, I've yeah. even kind Absolutely. of pulled away from a Christmas story and am really just like diehard and Christmas Vacation. Uh, yeah, Christmas Vacation's on there too. Also probably um, well, A Christmas Story and It's a Wonderful Life. I just really like It's a Wonderful Life. I haven't seen it in, in probably 20 years uh, or so. That's a, that's a great movie on its own without there being Christmas involved with it but um isn't there a colorized version i think so but but you watch the black and white yeah, you're a purist yeah no okay. you don't watch the color of it's a the technicolor life. version <laughs> and i don't even know that there is like that's kind of that's new information i think there maybe. is um, it seems to me like i i had heard about a colorized version of it's a wonderful life i think like nbc did that one year like they yeah maybe so they they broadcast it every year but i i always go down well for the past couple of years i've been going down to the alamo to watch it because you know if you can see it on the wonderful life yeah and if you can see it on the big screen why not why not um but and then i took my dad to go see interstellar i still haven't seen it so i've seen it three times now and Can I borrow one of your viewings? Because <laughs> I wish I could let you borrow one of my viewings so that we could talk about it more. Because I love it so much, and nobody around me in this group is. No, it I haven't had a chance. I have, you know, the last the- movie I saw in the theaters. No, Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, well that's not too far. Relatively away. recent. Also, the only movie I saw in the theaters in 2014. Okay. Wow. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a sad life I lead. Well, my. Uh... <laughs> You my don't work, have children, right? Nope. <laughs> Not a one. My work schedule it makes watching a movie rough. Oh, oh I just remembered another one that I saw. I saw, I saw, hor- <laughs> I saw Horrible Bosses too, as well. This week. Oh, yeah. How was that? Um, it was good. It was just about as good as the first one. So you is Jennifer know, Aniston in it again? Mm-hmm. So was Kevin Spacey. Oh, so, how about that? Yeah, yeah. And Chris Pine was was in it, and also Christoph Waltz. Wow. And so it Excellent. was good. It was funny. It was it was really funny. It was about as good as the first one. It wasn't better. It wasn't worse. It was about the same. So okay. Um, and then I saw Birdman again because uh, one of my friends wanted to go see it, and it's really really good. Okay, it's really good. Like both of you need to see Interstellar and Birdman. They were my two favorite movies of the year. Really? Yeah. All right. Bar none, those are the two best movies of the year, in my opinion. I will see what I can do. Boyhood's also really good, but that one's not as important to me. Okay. Um, you know what I really liked? Hmm. It's Captain America Winter Soldier. Yeah, no, Birdman and Interstellar are way better than Captain America Winter Soldier. Was that a 2014 film? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then I, I lied. I saw that one, too, in the theater. <laughs> okay. Ha-ha! <laughs> 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 Um, <laughs> I, okay, and, I didn't lie. I forgot. And then, we, I mean, I guess we can we can save Sons of Anarchy and The Walking Dead until after. sure, sure. Um, and then uh, I watched Comic Book Men. Yeah, and that was good this week with good. Uh, uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah, I can't remember his name, and he. <laughs> oh man, no, no, I can't either. The black guy. <laughs> <laughs> really? What, what is his name, please? Winston. Yeah, Winston. Winston well, that's the character's name. I'm trying to think of his, that's the character's name. I was thinking, name. trying to think of the actor's. I know name. the character's name, but I'm trying to think okay. of the actor's name. As yeah, long yeah. as you know the character's name. No, 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 we both knew the character's name. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the actor's name that I'm struggling with. Yeah, I don't have a clue. So. Okay, but okay. Anyway, he he guessed he was he was part of the ice cream truck that dupes kids into thinking there's ice cream and then tries to sell them comic books. 
Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which was a weird idea. Like, it really a, was. Like, I get it. Like, that's a really good idea if you advertise it as a comic Yeah, but trip. they were rolling around with only the promise of ice cream. <laughs> yes, with only the promise of ice cream. And then kids would come up, hey, I'll have ice cream. Well, we don't have any, but we have comics. Would you like Swamp Thing number one? Yes. Or whatever. <laughs> Cryptozoic Man. Cryptozoic Man. <laughs> yeah. um, wow. Wow. Uh, and then the last thing that I watched, and I have not, I am on the last episode, but I have not watched it yet, is Foo Fighter Sonic Highways. Try. And yes. I'm, I'm okay. so sad that it's going to be you, over you, soon. You waiting for it to not end? Yeah. Uh, that is a good Donkey show. I don't show. want it to ever end. I love that. I love that show so much. I still haven't seen the show. But um, I don't have proper access to the show the the, well we can fix that the (laughs) episode that i watched or i watched is that hbo yeah oh i watched three episodes actually um i watched los angeles uh new orleans and seattle oh so you you rewatched i rewatched los angeles no atlanta Huh? Wasn't it? I thought you'd already seen Atlanta. No, no, no. Atlanta is not a part of the show. Oh, I thought you just said Atlanta. I said New Orleans. Oh, New Orleans. Yeah, no. But um, I did rewatch an episode. I rewatched. Uh, um, so I technically watched four because uh, my dad was in town, so we we watched the Austin episode mm. together. Um, so that one I rewatched, and that's a really good episode, especially if you know anything about Austin and have been there and visited. It's a great city. Anything. It really is. Um, it's one of the best cities. Yeah, although it but, suffers a lot from the same thing Denver suffers from, is people from all over the country exactly, moving to that. Exactly, and they address that in the yeah. in the episode actually. Yeah. And, and they have the it, same kind of crappy traffic on Saturdays that we do, I'm sure. Uh huh. Yeah, and they they address that and how like you know because like at the end of the show, in the end of the episode, Dave Grohl was like, "I worry about cities like this that they become so popular that." Um, And then he's talking to Willie Nelson, and he's like, yeah, you know, I I worry about that too, but, I mean, eventually the artists are going to pick up and move a little bit further west. He's like, it's a long way to El Paso. (laughs) (laughs) That is true. Where are they going to end up in Terlingua? (laughs) (laughs) Or Alpine? (laughs) Welcome to West. Sorry, folks. Just making obscure Texas uh, references there. But you have to be from there to know. <laughs> but the Los Angeles episode was really good. The New Orleans episode was really good. Um, the Seattle episode may have been my favorite, and that's because, Seattle is a great city too. And and the reason it was my favorite is because it addresses all the music that I really love, which is you know grunge. Yeah, that's my favorite type of music. Is 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 all the grunge bands that came out of Seattle in the early to mid nineties. And they, you know, obviously have to talk about that in the Seattle episode. But here's the thing. If I have one criticism of this show, it would be, why is Seattle the second to last episode? That seems like such a perfect finale because it's where, it's such a pivotal thing for what, what's the himself. Well, that's true. You know, where, where did they base the last episode? New York. Which great Are they people. going in track order? Yeah. Okay, then... You know, there's they're, they're going in track order, but why not put Seattle as the last track too? Because I mean, that's such. I mean, they even talk about how pivotal it is for Dave Grohl in the show. Hmm. That that's where Nirvana ended, and that's where the Foo Fighters began. Yeah, you know, I don't know. That's a, that's a that's a strange thing. And so it's it was just very strange to me to have that be the second to last episode because as I was watching it, I was like, this would be such a perfect end to this show and to this album. But to have it as the second to last episode seems so strange. But I don't know. I haven't seen the New York episode le- yet. So, I mean, you know, they could have something going on there. But it just, I don't, I don't see how that could be more perfect than having the Seattle episode end the whole series. I don't know. CBGB's closed before he recorded Sonic Highways, didn't it? Um, yeah, I think so. Because that was like two or three years ago, I think. Uh-huh. Yeah, because... Uh, well, I was just trying to think of the timing of, of that. I was like... Because he, he, he bought the soundboard mm-hmm. out of that studio. Mm-hmm. It's like an iconic studio in, in music. Uh, mostly Motown. Right. Right? Yeah. Type. 
uh, recording history, and he bought that and put it in his recording studio in wherever he lives. Yeah. Does he actually live in Seattle? I don't still? think so. No. Okay. I don't think so. Wherever he is, he bought that. He bought that uh, recording, uh, the soundboard. Right. A very unique, or not so much unique, but just historical, historic right. soundboard. Yeah. You're talking about the CBGB's yeah. soundboard. Yeah. I mean that soundboard has has equalized more great acts than half. Well, I could probably even begin to relate. I mean, you're yeah. talking acts like the Ramones. You're talking. Uh, the Rolling Stones, everybody. Mm-hmm. CBGB's was around for a long time. Long yeah. time. And, you know, I mean, that I don't know when he started, when they started Sonic Highways, but, I mean, that could be where they're going with it. And, you uh, know, that would so. make a little more sense if they did that, but... That would be the only reason why I think they'd, they'd uh, end in New York. But, God, I don't know, man. I mean, just because of how, how pivotal it is to the Foo Fighters themselves, I can't see them ending the show anywhere but Seattle. Yeah. You know? I mean... Well, and, we'll see. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll probably know as soon as you, as you soon watch as I the... start watching it, but I don't want The New to. York episode. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to end. You just do a rewatch. Start over at the beginning. Well, you know, I don't want it to end, but at the same time I do because I'm working on getting... Uh, putting together like a, a, a more of a comprehensive stereo system. That's one thing that this new job has uh, <laughs> made me able to do. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Is to, is to, you know, have a little bit extra scratch around so that I can at least start to put together a, a decent More money and more hours? System. More hours, more specifically. I mean, okay. more money, definitely. Yeah. But more hours is the main thing. Yeah. Um, and so well that's awesome yeah i'm glad and and so i i don't want to tend but at the same time i kind of do because i want to i want to do a re-listen of the album because i listened to the album twice when it came out because i loved it so much but um but i really i told myself that i wasn't going to do it again until i had seen all the episodes so okay. I need to finish it before I can do that again. <laughs> All right. Well, and there that, you go. And I plan on that being the first album that I play on the new sound system. Very cool. So good. But yeah, it's it's a really really good show. I would very highly recommend it to both of you. Good. Well, check it out. I imagine it's probably going to be on uh, on disc at some point. Yeah, and or I'm, on demand or oh, whatever. I'm going to buy that immediately. <laughs> this is it's really good. Um. Uh, then let me see. I think that's it. If we're not talking about, uh, Walking Dead and Sons. Yeah, that's it. That's we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. So that's it. For okay. Now. Uh, I listened, or I watched, uh, Sound, South Park, the most recent South Park, which is actually kind of funny and it relates to the news, um, uh, and watching the, the, uh, the game awards. Because there was a trending gaming gamer award, and that's like one of these gamers that people go and watch them play games on Twitch. Okay. Well, that was that was the theme of the most recent South Park, is that these kids weren't actually gaming anymore; that they were just watching other people game. Ah. Uh, and um, I and see. and the gamer that they featured on South Park, PewDiePie, was one of the five that were nominated for Trending Gamer Award. Ah. It's kind of an interesting thing. So is his life imitating art? So he plays games and he comments on while he's playing the game. Okay. And he's just, you know, being silly and funny. Mm -hmm. There's something pretty much anybody could do. (laughs) Um, All right. Anyway, it was was kind of funny. And then I also watched my, uh, my throwaway shows. Sorry for those people that put their heart and soul into their, <laughs> their, uh, their projects. Uh, Covert Affairs, Mentalist, yes. and Elementary. Yes. Yeah. Uh, watched Key and Pill. Always funny. Always good. Yeah. Yeah. Always good. Uh, American Dad. It was their Christmas episode. Okay. It was their it, It's a Wonderful Life episode or Scrooge episode or whatever. Oh, okay. Well... I mean, they're kind of similar. Yeah, I guess the the stories of those are kind of similar. A little bit. It, it was it was a I wish I had his life kind of uh, thing, and he kind of and Stan found out what it would be like if uh, 
if he had traded lives with somebody. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's more It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Comic Book Man, yes. Uh, Madam Secretary, which I really enjoy. It's not It's not a great show, but I, I am enjoying it. And then I watched the... I finally got around to watching the Hell on Wheels uh, season finale. And uh, that one was good. And <clears throat> then I watched the most recent episode of Homeland... And that ended on kind of a cliffhanger, too. Um, they had just gotten Saul back from being uh, held hostage by oh. some terrorists, oh, got him back on American soil, and they were in a motorcade getting him taken it, or they weren't on American soil. They were going back to the embassy. It was kind of American soil. Um, getting back to the embassy, and the uh, the motorcade was attacked. Oh. So, and they were hit by rockets, and and the cars were, the the cars were destroyed, and um, Saul and Carrie were in that motorcade, so uh, kind of left their fate up up for uh, well, I don't even know what it's it still needs to be a show, so I guess Carrie needs to be alive, but Saul not Saul, Saul not necessarily, um, and then. <clears throat> Uh, Walking Dead mid-season finale, so they won't be back until February. This is going to be the last Walking Dead for a bit. And then uh, Sons. Sons of Anarchy, which is second last the episode. second to last episode. Ever. 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 Well, and that makes a lot of sense, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, seeing as how that happened, I was like, I'm, I don't know how the last episode's going to be then. Um, so which one do you want to talk about first? I guess uh, let's do Walking Dead since it's the least. Okay. <laughs> so uh, they they both end in 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 a somewhat accepted but still a still shocking death. He'll forget by the time. The- yeah, I, I was just going <laughs> to yeah, remind remind the audience that we were discussing Walking Dead spoilers last time I was on the show, and I don't. It even didn't remember. mean anything. To I don't me. remember what we talked about. So. Right. Yeah, it's good. Please discuss amongst yourselves. I will I will interject when appropriate. Okay. All right, so uh, basically where we ended from the episode before is that, um, uh, you know, we had we had one of the guards, like, get away. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. But they resolved that very quickly. before very quickly. Before the credits in, in this episode, um, he's getting away, he's running, going back presumably to Dawn to let them know what's going on and whatnot. But uh, Rick hits him with a car. Yeah, and he like he warns him a couple times, and then he just the guy's running with his hands behind his backs, and he just <laughs> and just taps him, and he just <laughs> uh, breaks his back, and oh, then yeah. uh, in a um, in a, a, a bit of pseudo compassion, shoots him. Yeah. So he's not paralyzed and getting chewed on by zombies. He's just dead. He's just he's just dead. Because seriously, what kind of e- existence would you have as a paralyzed zombie handcuffed? I believe they call that an all night buffet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um anyway, so so that that happened. <laughs> yeah, but that happened really quick. And the biggest thing that happened, let's just get to it. Um, is it Dawn, time for the obligatory spoiler alert? Yes. Spoiler alert! Um, Don somewhat un- unintentionally shoots Beth in the head. Yeah, somewhat in- unintentionally because yes, she pulled her gun out of her holster at close quarters. Um, there there was not a struggle for the gun, but the trigger was probably pulled. Uh, just. Well, by accident. And Daryl nipped that shit in the bud yeah. real quick. <laughs> yeah, uh, Daryl immediately put Dawn down. Immediately. Like, there was no, like, oh, should we do this? It was just like, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. If that's how we're going to play, you know? So it was, it was, it was pretty crazy. Um, and that goes into the, the Talking Dead also. Uh, you know, she that actress was uh, was on Talking Dead, talking about it, and about you know she she was you know she broke up a couple of times, you know, kind of tear teared up, 
uh, talking about you know what it's like to to leave a show you know the family on the show. Um, you know she was uh, the girl in Hello Ladies too. Oh, was she the roommate to Stuart? Oh, that's funny. Mm-hmm. Beth or Dawn was Dawn. Yeah, yeah, not Beth. Mm-mm. Not not the first one to die, but the second one to but die. But the second one, yeah. Second woman to die. Second woman, yeah. Probably fifth or sixth person. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what that's like for uh, for Maggie and Glenn now that Maggie has lost both her father and her sister. Yeah, that's what she's going to freak out. About it was she's was, going to freak out? Daryl may freak out. Yeah, but I mean, we don't know until a few, we'll see in a couple months. A couple months yeah. for sure, um, and also in February on a uh, side but related Better note. Call Saul. No, February is also the, when they uh, start up the spinoff series from Walking Dead. Oh, okay. Completely thinking, s- different set of survivors. I was thinking you were you were talking about Better Call Saul. Well, but that, is that February also? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, you know something. Mm, okay. <laughs> They should just leave well enough alone. That's, I don't know. It could be fun. It could be good, but God, I don't know. Just come on. Saul and Mike? Yeah, but I don't want it to be like Joni Loves Chachi or something. <laughs> Bullshit like that, you know? I mean, Breaking yeah. Bad was so successful. So, yeah, let's make another show about it. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Just leave well enough alone. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm willing to reserve judgment on that. I guess. I mean, I, I love Mike, you know, and Saul, but I just, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so what do you have to say about Walking Dead? Were you surprised surprised by her, her death, Beth's death? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. See, I wasn't. I was waiting for it. I was really surprised by it. I didn't think that that was going to happen, because it was mid-season, and I knew that they were going to do something, but... Um, you know, I, I, figured, I figured Dawn was finished, but I never saw death coming. Beth. Beth. <laughs> Death of um, Beth. <laughs> I knew that she was going to die whenever she picked up the scissors and tucked them in her cast. Really? Yeah. I didn't think so. Yeah. Because I, I thought that was just a precaution. Like, no. You know, you know, she might need a weapon, and so like I figured that that's all that was. I, I didn't think anything of it. Yeah. Yep. I was like, oh. She's the one. <laughs> Things are going to go badly for her. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was good mid season, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I I agree. I'm um, I really really enjoy this season of Walking Dead. I it's different, but I enjoy it. So because basically you you got taken in the first half of the season, you got taken from uh, Terminus. To the hospital group. Well, in the church. A little bit. A little bit. A couple episodes. There. Yeah. yeah. And then there was the whole thing with... But that was still Eugene. dealing with the Terminus people. Well, yeah. Going then, into the, the hospital. But, but then there was the whole thing with Eugene, too. That they spent a couple oh, that's true. On. Yeah. There was that. Sorry, Will. This means nothing to you. <laughs> Not at all. No. At all. But it's kind of entertaining. Yeah. I, I'm sitting here actually thinking, going, I wonder what happens inside the CDC. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because he did. It, you, you realize that he didn't finish season one. No, I didn't. They finish just got season to the oh. CDC, so he's the second to last. Episode. Second yeah. to last episode. That's not the last episode. No. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea what happens. Stuff, the happens. Stuff, Stuff happens. Stuff happens. happens in the Stuff, CDC. Yeah. Yeah. Things go down. Things go down. All right. So, um, um, okay. Well, I, I really enjoyed that mid-season finale. Yeah. So did I. But let's. Yeah, move. man. That last. That last scene. Oh, it was heartbreaking. Yeah. yeah. The the music only, no sound, uh, no vo- you know, Daryl. actor sound. Um, Daryl. Carrying her out. Carrying Beth's uh, dead body out of the hospital. Maggie seeing what's going on, her reacting to that, and Glenn reacting to Maggie, and everybody else reacting to seeing Beth's dead body. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was yeah. a good final scene. All right, let's uh, move on to Sons. Sons of Anarchy. Holy crap. He did it. Well, yeah. I didn't think he was for a minute. Yeah, a minute, I didn't either. I he was going to hold back. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, he's getting the mayhem vote anyway, so fuck it. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, basically... <laughs> 
F bomb. <laughs> um, basically, what F-bomb happens fix. is uh, Jax meets with the presidents uh-huh. and lets them know, "Hey, I screwed up. You know, I got nothing to defend I myself here. Defend myself. I got nothing to say. I messed up. I jumped. I jumped to judgment. I was wrong. Um, I know what you guys need to do. It's totally okay." Which is kind of a theme in this show. Yeah. Um, he tell he tells the uh, the presidents of of the different chapters of Sons of Anarchy that he realizes that they have to they have to vote in favor of recommending him meeting the Reaper. Yeah. But that it's okay. Right. And then um, he meets with the Irish kings mm-hmm. or a representative of the Irish kings. He thinks that's going to go one way, but it goes another because the uh, the Irish kings take out who's normally his his lo- or they want him to take out wh- who's promise. normally his local contact yeah. uh, in the states because that guy's been skimming. So the Irish kings want him to uh, to take take Connor is it Connor? I think so. Uh, take Connor out and. If he does that, then maybe things can go forward with the Irish selling weapons directly to the the uh, um, what is it? What is their name? The Mexican gang. Which one? Either the Islats or the Mayans? No, the Mayans. Okay. Mayans. Yeah. Um. And so that that's going on, but then in the middle of that, Jax finds out where. Uh, Gemma is. Gemma is through Wendy. Yeah, just offhand. Like, she didn't even know what she was doing because she doesn't... You know, right. She doesn't She's like, oh, obviously. I've finally heard... Uh, finally heard where Gemma, where Gemma is. is at. Yeah. She's off visiting her father at the uh, really at the old folks' Al home. Holbrook. Yeah. Hal Holbrook, man. Yeah. Great actor. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool between uh, Gemma and, and her dad. Yeah. Yeah. Hal Holbrook does good work. Yeah, so um, that was kind of cool, and and uh, Gemma is basically saying her goodbyes yeah. to her f- her father, and then Unser Unser finds out where she is, and she and uh, and uh, Nero is asks that? Unser to go up and basically save Gemma's life by like taking her into custody or or, or whatever, sending her, sending uh, Unser up. To meet Gemma, but Unser gets there maybe like five minutes That's before before, Jax, <laughs> before gets Jax gets there, and uh, so let's just say Unser fails to save Gemma. <laughs> yeah, but that whole thing, uh, you know, Jax is like Unser, you need to just go home. Just go home. He's like Unser do doesn't that. go home. Unser uh, pays the price for that. Yeah. Knowing he was going to pay the price for that, yeah, and then Jax and Gemma have this like oddly touching exchange before he shoots her in the back of the head. Before he shoots her in the back of the head. Um, but again, you know, following like from the beginning of the episode, she's like, you know, I know what you have to do. It's okay. Yeah. And, and it's and see the thing was too is I don't agree with how they did that because Jax was always supposed to be the character that was you know he was the continuance of his father the beacon of good and when but she, he's been falling away from that well yeah but see here's the thing is that I didn't expect him to actually shoot her because she goes you know it's okay this is who we are and I expected that to click with him and be like no this isn't who we have to be. And just put down the gun and just let her suffer like that and, you know, call it in or whatever. But no, he didn't. And I'm really disappointed with it. I'm totally I, off, I'm off the bandwagon of this show now. That's all right. I mean, you like, only have one more I episode. I got one more episode. But <laughs> you can be off any bandwagon I'm, you want. I'm You're going to watch that last episode. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm very disappointed in how they ended that. I felt like it would have been much more impactful um, if he didn't end up killing her. I, you know, I think it, it kind of had to happen. It didn't, though. <laughs> It didn't have to happen, and it would have been better if it didn't. I don't know. It would have been a slight redemption of Jax if he didn't, I, he, he wasn't if he could hold back from doing it. 
Yeah, this this is a this is a hero in decline story. It's not. I know it's a hero in decline story, but there's still that. I mean, even Walter White got his his moment of redemption. Okay, here here's the thing though. Jax knows that he's got probably less than a week to live. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. It's 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 it doesn't matter at all. And he he's supposed to let Gemma keep on being Gemma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. I respect he, that. He's supposed to do that because a it's it's worse for her if 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 she keeps on living. It is because she has to live with the fact that she killed her her grandson's mother. Yeah. You know. And so, I mean, it doesn't matter what happens to him. He was supposed to be the he was supposed to be the beacon of good in the show. And then, you know, Tara dies and that just all goes out the window completely, which I get for uh, you know, for most of the season I get that, you know, like it's Okay, the, okay, it's okay. Just, but so not having seen a single episode, I'm dimly aware that this show's about motorcycle gangs. But from what you're describing here, uh-huh. is it not possible that his killing of this individual was a final act of kindness, thereby redeeming him even a little bit? No. No? <laughs> no. No. Not at all. Because this was, it was, no, no. I, uh, because on the... No, I, I think, uh, I think Will's closer to the truth there. I don't. I don't think so. Uh, Jim has been losing her mind this season because over from guilt. Yeah, but see, but also here's the thing: is you remember when Nero is telling Unser to go up there and save her, and he's like, "You still love her, don't you?" He's like, "He's like, this, this isn't about her. saving her. This is about saving Jax." There's no saving Jax. But they're fucking <laughs> f bomb, <laughs> f bomb. <laughs> You and your dirty mouth, Brick. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, there could have been. I no, I, I see that path because but... that would have been so much more cathartic than just you know doing what we all expected him to do anyway. Well, you know what they say, Brick. Sometimes life will just up and up and f bomb you for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Just you. You're still cool, but I pray. <laughs> because uh, you haven't seen, you don't know what you're talking about. I anyway. have no clue, yeah. <laughs> like I said, I'm something about motorcycles, right? Something about motorcycles. Sweet. And then he uh he goes back and hook us, hooks up with Wendy. Yeah, which you know He's it's, a little sad about killing his mom, so he goes back and hooks up with his ex. Yeah. I just I'm they're a family again. I'm going to watch one episode, <laughs> one more episode. That's all I'm going to watch. And if they and don't I'm turn done. it around, they're I'm just, never watching it again. They're, they're a happy family, Brick. They're a happy family. Oh, God. You know, I mean, the. F- just, you know. It's it, Jim's it, fault. All yeah, of this. I know. I know all of this is her fault. But he's going to be dead in a week anyway. Maybe. We'll see. I think so. Yes, that's exactly how it's going to end. Because, you know, just like him killing Gemma, I'm going to be able to predict everything else that happens in this stupid show because Kurt Sutter apparently can't go off track for anything. <laughs> you know what's going to you know what's going to happen? Story, he's going to live just to make <laughs> no no. <laughs> it's going to get get up to the last thirty seconds of the the show. And then Raylan Givens is going to come in, pull, get out of a car, and shoot him. <laughs> I would tune in for that. <laughs> right? <laughs> they both have X shows. Right? They well, could do uh, a little crossover. I they like, could exist in the like same Michael world. I like Michael Chiklis's little cameo in this last yeah, episode, yeah. too. A little Vic Mackey action. A little Vic Mackey. So what, what if Twisty the Clown popped up and just, you know, offed him? Would that work? Ooh. Twisty's dead, though. Twisty, Twisty is dead. Oh, you haven't seen American Horror Story? Not this season, no. Yeah. You have no idea who Twisty is, then. No. Is he... Uh, is it's that, a great clown. He is, is a that, good clown. Oh, that's... that's a damn good that's, clown. That's uh, Norm from Fargo as the... Yeah, clown. yeah. Okay. It's a good clown. Does he ever talk about... Oh, it's just a three cent. <laughs> no. <laughs> he does not. <laughs> so, um... 
I think so. What else do you have to say about Sons of Anarchy? I'm, I'm really I'm curious angry. to see. It. You, it's okay. It'll be fine. No, yeah. it won't be. I put I put years into this show, You're and I watch and, one more episode, okay. and if it doesn't turn around, <laughs> I'm finished. <laughs> I'm telling you, um, Brick. And I stuck I, through I, it when I, other people didn't. No, I understand. Yeah, I understand. But just like take it to heart that no matter what happens in the last episode, it'll still end better than Dexter. I haven't watched Dexter, so that doesn't even make sense to me. I've watched the first season of Dexter. It'll end better than Lost. Mm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. But, you know, I mean... It'll I've end even... better than From Dust Till Dawn. What about Dallas? I've never... I never watched <gasps> From Dust Till Dawn. I mean, I watched the movie, of course, but I never watched right. the Right, the movie. The movie. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. I've seen the movie many times. Yeah. Um, but uh, what was the one? I was that horrified there for Will it end better than Dallas? Um, uh, it was not a dream. <laughs> so, probably. So, but see, here's so, yes. the thing, is that it's over yes. the years, I've even, like, thinking back on it, and maybe this is just because I want it to be, but thinking back on it, I've actually grown accustomed Maybe not so much that I like it, but I've grown accustomed to it, and I'm not as angry about it as I was initially. Just like I, I'm not as angry about the end of The, the Sopranos as I was initially, because I got more time to think about it. Um, but I'm not as angry about the ending of Lost as I used to be. I'm still kind of angry about it, because it feels like they kind of just rushed it and put something stupid together. Like, oh, they're all dead. Okay. You know, but like, I mean... But I'm really angry about this because I really gave this show a chance. <laughs> I really did, you know. See, like, I def- I'm, I'm not quite as angry because uh, I'm the first to admit that Sons of Anarchy has not always been a good show. I know. But see, here's the thing is that those first three seasons were some of the best television I've ever seen. Those were incredible e- seasons of even, television. Even though I've backed off of saying that three season three was terrible i will not say that it's great the first three seasons were great season four was okay season ireland five, was pretty bad season five was last year right because yeah. ireland was three ireland was three so and season was five it. was last year right yeah and this is six so season five was eh, but it got better towards the end you know, like it did. Like that season four was was the low point. I I really I really figured. You know, like season three and four were the low points. Season one and two were amazing, and then was five, season four the return of Wendy? I think so. Where she started like figuring more into the storyline again. I think so. Yeah, I can't remember exactly. I just remember that season three and four were not the best. Maybe maybe five. But five, you know, was where Tara was like trying to get out, and she was trying to. Oh, and season Jax. five was the return of Wendy. Yeah, and and she was trying to convince Jax to get out, and and uh, and, and he Jax was in, injected in uh, Wendy with heroin. Yeah, and he was on board with it, you know, yeah. and he wasn't. He was, you know, re becoming this that that whole thing right there, injecting Wendy with heroin. Yeah, that that was the point where I'm like. Jack's not coming back from this. Well, and see, that's the thing is that like I never expected him to fully come back from yeah. it. Yeah. But you know, just putting down the gun and walking away would have been great. It's too late for Jax. It. Yeah, and it still would have been, but yeah. it would have been a great way to end that exchange is to just holster the gun and walk away and just leave her in the garden. That's it. But no, you know, it's Kurt in the Sutter has cut, to. I'm sure Kurt Sutter has to have the most simple ending to anything that anybody can predict was going to happen, and so yeah, yeah, let's just end it that way because, like, we weren't all expecting it. <laughs> Why don't you do something original and unexpected, you ass? He does. It- Jax Jax's complicated uh, resolutions to conflicts with his his. Yeah, uh, but he does nothing complex. He does nothing complex with character development. No, he did in the first two seasons. 
which was really good and it was really brilliant and it was really something to watch. And then after that, he was just like, nope, screw it. He's just going to be a thug now. You know? <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. But I, I'm... It'll be okay, Brick. It'll be over soon. It'll so. be over soon. Brick, one more episode. <laughs> I, I know. I don't, like, one, I don't even know if I can watch that. One more episode. <laughs> Shut up. Just watch the show. One I'm going to watch it. I know I will because it's, it's on one Tuesday. more. It's fine. It's just one more episode, and then it's over with. But I hate you, Kurt Sutter. I hope you, <laughs> wow. I hope you, I hope you never make another show. You, um... Um, I, he's actually he's elf. already cast his wife in the next show. Oh, great. that he's working on. Great, I'm glad he's working on another show. Yeah, he is. <laughs> so he can, you know, just get my hopes up in the first two seasons, and then dash him for another six years, ass. <laughs> <laughs> Four years, whatever. I don't care. I don't this care has anymore. been a wonderful little rant by you, Brick. We do, we don't get to hear rants from you very often. So good for you, Brick. But I I'm angry about it because I there were other people that that loved the show in the first two seasons, and then and then they stopped watching it after like the third season because they were well, like, good oh, for them is... because they don't have to sit through the rest of it. Yeah, because they were like, oh, this is crap. It's never going to be anything good. And I was like, no, 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 give it a chance. Give it a chance because the first two seasons were so amazing. And so I defended the third season. I defended the fourth season. And I really defended the fifth because I thought that was on the way up. And then Jimmy killed Tara. And I was like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then this season, I was, you know, I... I I didn't like it, but I understood. It made sense for the story to go the way that it did. Yeah. But then with this last episode, I'm just finished. Oh, and, uh, except for Tuesday. Except for Tuesday. But that's Was just it? that's just out of sheer loyalty. Oh, Juice went away in this uh, in this episode too. Yeah, but nobody cares about Juice. Marilyn Manson killed Juice. I don't care. I really don't. I, don't. I wanted Juice to die. I've been well, wanting yeah. Juice to die for seasons. I've been wanting Ju several. Seasons. Everybody's been wanting Juice to die for seasons. But that's the thing is that no one really cares about him. They've all been wanting him to die for oh, no. seasons. No, they care about him, but in a negative way. I, I was so indifferent toward that character. As soon as he tried to hang himself, I was indifferent toward that guy. Like I was I, like I really wish he would have just succeeded initially, so that he would have just been a non entity. Been yeah. For the rest of the show. But. Yeah. <sighs> All right. What else do you have to say? I don't have anything else to say. Let's just end this. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we, I think we can do this last segment pretty quickly. Uh, Will, what's your plan? Destiny. Brick, what's your plan? Dragon Age Inquisition. Jeff, what's your plan? Destiny. Because it's awesome. You both suck. Play Dragon <laughs> Age. No, you might have more fun if hey, you we, played with Hey, we those. did tell you to get it on the Xbox One. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it for at least a while, and I have my own personal reasons for not getting it. <laughs> well, no, we tried to tell you to get it on the PS, uh, the Xbox instead of the PS4. I know, and I would probably be still enjoying that game if I had made that decision initially, but I didn't. Mm. So should have listened to your friends. Yep, mm. I really should have. I didn't though. So there. That's where we're at now. Okay. <laughs> um. So. <laughs> I'm I'm really super excited. F bomb. Sorry, what? Special, especially after listening to Gamer Tag Radio, I am excited to get back into the Master Chief Collection because they were nearly wetting themselves over sploosh. Like the yeah sploosh um, over the re the anniversary treatment that Halo Two got. Okay. Have you, have you guys seen it yet? No. Apparently it's it's gorgeous. I've heard good things about it. That's why when you said that it was so buggy at launch, I was very very sad. Well, it's the matchmaking. It's not the single player. Oh, okay. You can get in and play, um, but the matchmaking was completely broken. Ah. Um. So I don't know. We'll see. You know, I I may even I may even unwrap that package tonight. Wow. Yeah, so I've I've got those three games. I've got Master Chief Collection, uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, and I've got four, Far Cry Four, which are all supposed to be very good games. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to playing that with you guys. Yeah, like like whichever ones that that uh, that we're able to play. Do you, do you have any of those? Will I uh, know? I'll play Destiny with you. Okay. I w I would like to attempt a raid. 
I, I whenever would, we can put together some time. Yes, I would. I would like to get Far Cry Four. That was on the list. Yeah, that's on the list for um, me too. You know, m- my would, most my most uh, uh, anticipated thing about Far Cry Four is doing the alternative ending, okay. which is from the beginning screen of the game, just leaving the controller there for like ten fifteen minutes, and you can beat the game. Really? Yeah. Weird. That's strange. Yeah, they like the guy comes back and then takes you to go visit your like the final resting place of of somebody in your family or something like that, and then hmm. that's the end of the game. Okay. I'm I'm most looking forward to it because it gives me a chance to play co op with Sam. And the last time I did that was uh, Crackdown. Well, that's why I want to play Master Chief Collection. I want yeah. to play co op with you guys. I, I well I I specifically I want to play co op with all of you but I specifically want to play it with him because the last time we did he kicked me off of a building and I feel like I need that seems that seems perfectly reasonable it has that, anyone ever told you you might be carrying a grudge <laughs> maybe <laughs> it, was that, it was that last tower in like the biggest tower in in Crackdown. And and I was at the top of it, and I had already I was killing the boss, like I was yeah. there. And Sam died a little bit way of the way down, and he was running up to the front of it, and um and he runs up, and he just he runs up, and then just immediately hits B and kicks me off of the tower, like just before I'm about to kill the boss. I'm like, what are you doing? And then he kills the boss, and then the he game. kills the boss himself, and wins the game. And he didn't mean to kick me off of the building, but he did. He did, <laughs> he did mean to kick you off the building. So, <laughs> he totally meant to kick so, you off the building. So, Sam, if we play Far Cry 4, just know. You I'm won't, kicking you off the building. You won't see it coming. But at some point, when you really don't want to die, it's going to happen. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, I think uh, I think that's a show. If everybody's all all done and all talked out. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right, fellas. Um, thank hey. you all for watching and listening. We really, really, really appreciate you guys. Um, uh, yeah, three hundred and two episodes. Seriously. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, do you guys have any ideas for next week? I know we're running out of time quickly. Um. Can you think of anything 303 based that we could do for episode 303 since we're in the 303 area code? Um, I can't think of a Colorado tie in to our show, is the thing. We, we could swear to only drink Colorado microbrews while we do it. Uh, seems legit. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't know. Those of you that, that indulge can enjoy our other natural products. Natural that are, are Colorado based, yeah. Specific Good, lots of to Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, could, yeah, we have yeah, lots of could, Colorado things yeah, here. You could do that. I'm, I'm probably gonna do that. All right, that Thanks. wouldn't surprise me if you did that. Uh, we'll uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll we'll have to compare schedules and all that kind of nonsense. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks again, everybody. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye.